All right, friends. Welcome to the CrossFit Grandview Podcast, Episode 3, Why the Little Things Matter. Today, we're talking about just that, why the little things matter, what you can do to optimize your training here at CrossFit Grandview. So, Brandon, take it away. Yeah, so your training results are a sum total of a ton of tiny little details. You know, one of those details might not make a huge difference, but cumulatively, (laughs) they're going to determine the results you're getting from your training. Uh, So today, what we're going to do is we're just going to dive into some of the little things that, that, that Joey and myself have noticed, like they, they might seem like small things, but they make a huge difference in your, in your training results. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I really wanted to ask Joey about it because, you know, he's been, he's a guy you know, I talked to him. He's not the most, like, I've had a lot of athletes come through the gym, and from just a, a raw, like, talent perspective, he's not the most talented guy I've ever had in. No. You know, he's not. Yeah. I've seen, there's more talented guys and girls in the gym right now than he is, but he is one of those people who's got the most out of the talent that he's gotten, and it's by doing a lot of these little things, so... Mm-hmm. Joey, I just want you to share with us like some of those little things that you've done. Yeah, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. Like, I'm, I'll be the first to admit I'm not the most talented in the gym, but I mean, I, even when I started, like, I realized it's what you're, what other little things you're doing to help yourself out in that gym. Um, you know, I came in, I was like a buck fifty soaking wet and yeah. pushing two hundred right now, and that's just because you know one of the little things I started doing was eating right. Um, you know, eating before workouts, eating after workouts making sure I'm getting enough calories. Um, another big thing I did when I started, I was in college, and uh, I think a lot of our college students are guilty of this. <laughs> you go out a lot. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's real easy to go out three nights a week, booze it up, and then come in Monday, like, man, nothing feels right today. And then by the time it feels right, it's Thursday in my case, and then, yep. then you're going out again on Thursday. So cutting that booze out helped me tremendously. I think that's the biggest, like, difference I saw in my training the, the game changer right oh there. it was massive for me you know just like oh, maybe we don't booze as much you know yeah. I, I still enjoy a beer don't sure. get me wrong I'll sell you out have a beer but I'm not finishing a case with the boys at 3 a.m. Like, yeah that's, that's the biggest thing um another important thing for me was sleep once I found like man you can't train as hard as you do or want to and not sleep yeah um when you, you can talk about that too yeah you know? um another little thing I always I think I can remember doing um, stretching before, yeah. after class. Um, I'm a big proponent of just just doing that. I know my girlfriend gets mad at me because I have like a foam roller and stuff, and we'll be at home sitting on the couch, and I'll just get down and start rolling something out or working well, on mobility. Well, for CrossFit too. I mean, you've got a lot of muscle on your body, and you you're real mobile though. Yeah. Like you just drop down into a squat, you know, your shoulders are mobile. Like a lot of guys, when they get bigger, they get stiffer. So that, mm-hmm. that mobility, that's what allows you to move with that kind of coordination. And, it's key. Yeah. It, it has to happen. So, I mean, like eating, sleeping, like cutting the booze, those were three enormous things for me that just took me to the next level. And I mean, there's other little things that I did, you know, like different workouts and all those things like that. But I mean, you can't do this stuff effectively if you're not like those are the three biggest ones um, yeah would you say that even made a bigger difference than like say like training protocols or 100 percent yeah you know um the best program is the one you do it doesn't really matter what program you're doing sure but if you're doing the little things outside of the gym like you're gonna see the results yeah you're recovering and everything like that so those are mine what about you what do you think yeah a a lot of yours are mine Um, yeah you know, I've been doing this, <clears throat> so just I've been working out and been into it since I was 18. I'm 35 now, so it's funny to say that out loud, but um, I've got some years under my belt and some experience just training, and as I've gotten older, I've noticed the little things making a bigger and bigger difference, and I have to do them where I just perform terribly in the gym. Yeah. Um, you know, going back in time... You know, the first little thing I did that I remembered made a huge difference was every week I would get a frozen pizza um, in my grocery cart for for a dinner. And I remember cutting that out. And uh, I remember always thinking, like, oh, just genetically I can't get, like, abs. Like, it was just, like, I didn't think it was a possibility right. for me. yeah. And I remember cutting that frozen pizza out. It's not like I got a six-pack, but I started to notice, like, 
pretty fast my body changing and you know looking back I'm like well I was cutting out a thousand <laughs> calories a week of fat of, of crap <laughs> yeah of just like fat and dough yeah um every week you know that accumulates on you pretty fast you know that's a couple pounds a month probably of just lard I was mm-hmm. holding on to so taking that out and then a huge one for me was you know um I picked up dipping when I was like in high school and like you know when I'd be out drinking beers on the weekends I'd smoke cigarettes with them with my buddies oh, and yeah. you know that's what's cool in general is that's kind of like not as much yeah it's yeah, not as like yeah. a socially accepted thing but that was like the thing to do when I was growing up and uh when I was 26 and started getting serious about fitness, um, I cut all that out. I quit dipping, smoking, all of that. And uh, that was like, that was my, like, you know, when you said you quit drinking a lot, that yeah. was my game changer. Like, when I quit dipping, couldn't even put my finger on it. Like, it was like, a lot of people, it seems kind of consequence free. You yeah. know, like, you're, oh, yeah. you're running around, you're like, ah, this isn't hitting my lungs like if you're a pack a day smoker. But I, my energy levels were... Right. night and day different yeah. when I did oh. that. Um, so that was a huge game changer for me. And then more recently, so, you know, those were my two big ones. And then when I got into my 30s, I just started breaking down a little bit more. And, you know, a huge one, uh, when I was single, like I'd stay up on the internet, you know, till... Go down the rabbit hole. Yeah. It, it, I, I might go to bed, you know, hey, I'm going to bed at 11 every night. And then like one night I go to bed at two because I like went down an internet yeah. rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time moves faster when you're on the internet. It <laughs> absolutely does. So my sleep was like all over the place. And then just like in general, I haven't been like the best sleeper. But once, you know, me and Kate got together and, you know, I was grown, um, I got into a regular sleep schedule went to bed at the same time, woke up at the same time. And, you know, I really have to thank her for that. Like she got me dialed in on that. And then I would say like, again, that was my next huge jump. I'm like, I have energy now. Like I'm not dragging myself around all day. Like I can attack these workouts and then I'm feeling like all recovered in the morning. And, uh, so like something that I actually started using lately is, uh, this sleep with me podcast. Mm -hmm. So, it's this guy, he just like tells stories. I couldn't tell you anything he talks about. He just has this voice and he just like kind of mumbles so about monotone. it kind of is goofy. It like you laugh when you hear it. It's like blah 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 blah. He kept talking about I think he was buddies with Rick Moranis or something. <laughs> yeah, just, I, that's the only <laughs> thing I can remember that he said. And then you're out. It's just like it's like NyQuil. He just knocks you out. But so if anyone's looking for something to help put them to sleep, sleep, it's called Sleep With Me is the podcast. That's great. And then, um, you know, diet has been huge for me. So as I've gotten older, like I can't lean on. So I used to train when I was competing in CrossFit. And, you know, I'd train. I'd do the long, like level two style sessions, you know, two mm-hmm. hour training sessions or training, you know, 90 minutes straight through or a couple times a day. Um I started breaking down. I can't train with that kind of volume and and really stay healthy. So I have to lean more on my diet and, uh, Kate and the body biz. Basically what they do is help you with all the little things. So my wife's business, her, Lauren and, and Julie, they help you get all this stuff dialed in, but she's really worked on with me on like getting my meal timing down. So if I eat about an hour, hour and 15 minutes before my workout and then eat right after and really concentrate like my carbs and like my heavier meals around the workouts, Mm -hmm. Like, you build muscle better, you stay leaner, uh, you recover from the workouts, and then where most people, they just backload all their food. So they just, they don't, they eat like a bird all day, and then they get home, and And then they eat, they eat dinner, and then they eat popcorn after dinner while they're watching TV, and then they eat dessert, and they backload all their calories. So really getting away from doing that, I mean, like I can just see it in my body, it just made it. Yeah, drastic absolutely. difference and I mean I have a cup I mean so I've geeked out on this stuff because again I don't train I, I do one workout a day five days a week so I rely on these little things for all my results um, active PT so mm-hmm. I, I keep a standing appointment once a week same here yeah, yeah. I have to like yeah I've got away from it so like two or three weeks ago I'm like ah, I think I'm all good and then like I missed that appointment and I'm just started like hurting. Mm-hmm. And 
Yeah, and it's like, not like anything's wrong with uh-huh. us. It's just like it's nice to have a set of eyes on you. Yeah. When you move. Yeah. And that's a that's a huge thing that's helped me just, you know, not get hurt. It's just you know, they they do a great job of just pinpointing things that you could do better. Yeah. Just small things in your squat or overhead movement. Yep. I mean and I've and they they told us like Use this on your class. So I get a lot of my warm-up ideas from yeah. them. You know, I've, I'm throwing things at you guys that I, they make me do. Yep. So I'm trying to just channel as much knowledge as I can at you guys, too. Yeah. I, I, Huge thanks to Active. I they, agree with all of that. Yeah, they've they've been a game-changer for me and like, just keeping me healthy and training five days a week, you know, mm-hmm. consistently. I don't miss days. And, and uh yeah, so it's worth the investment, in, in my opinion. You know, you'll have to spend some money, but it's it's well worth it. And then, Absolutely. Like my last big, my last big little thing is uh, getting a long stretch mm-hmm. uh, once a week. So on my off day, Thursday. So after we're done with this podcast, I'm gonna do the the long rom wad. So I either do that or a yoga class once a week, and then just getting a long stretch and really just diving into everything once a week. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's the easiest thing to let go and as soon as I let go of it my knee starts to hurt or my shoulder starts to hurt yeah. so I've noticed if I maintain that like it's not so much that I see the huge difference from it is when I don't do it I just the wheels yeah, start to it's, fall it's one of the things you don't notice until you stop doing it yeah and then you're like oh yeah. crap so yeah. yeah, the wheels really start to fall off the bus. So so uh, yeah, so our advice for you guys, we got a list of some things that you guys can do to kind of help you, you know, make a difference in your training. Um, so Brandon, why don't you go ahead and list this for us? Yeah, so big thing is just getting to class earlier on time. So <clears throat> if you get to class early, it gives you time to stretch, activate muscles. Um, like with a crossover symmetry. So I have a whole routine. I have a couple. So I have like a 10 minute and like a 20 minute one where I'll mobilize all these areas. Uh, you know, I'll do like a full um, crossover symmetry routine and just get everything prepped to train. And then I always perform a lot better when I do that. Yeah. If I just run right into class, I mean, we're well known for our warm ups. So Absolutely. it's not like we're, we're, underdoing warm-ups and we're just throwing people in but everyone's got like specific thing. things yeah. like we probably aren't going to dress your tight ankles for 20 minutes right. you know so i'll do that if i'm overhead squatting i'm like i gotta stretch my ankles and you know my hips out for 15 minutes before we get into this and i'm going to perform and move a lot better absolutely we, we know? don't know what everyone's little thing is sure we do a great job of i mean you i watch you every 5 class getting everybody moving the right yep. direction. We'll hit the you know major muscle groups that you need warmed up for the workout. But like if you got like a like you said nagging ankle or something like that, I don't know that. Sure. So we have to yeah. like that's the perfect time. And then even just from a perspective, you if you consistently run into class 5 minutes late, <clears throat> you're coming in, you're missing not only just missing 5 minutes of the warm up, but you're probably a little frazzled. You're now you're mentally off. And it's going to affect the rest of your workout. Mm-hmm. And then you might even leave with like a, like a less than great attitude. So if you yeah. get to class on time, you're going to feel better. You'll know what's going on. Yeah. yeah you're not <laughs> going to be like, what, you know, what am I supposed to do? And so just start you in a good place. So right. really trying to get to class on time. You know, hey, it's 530. We know traffic. Like there's... There's situations. There's situations, yeah. and we're cool about it. We're not, you know, we don't make you run a mile or do 50 burpees in front of the class. Yet. Yet, exactly. <laughs> but, but, yeah, it, you know who you are if you're doing that, mm-hmm. you know, day in and day out. So Absolutely. Get in the class on time. What's a what's another one? You, you can yeah. do this next uh, one here. So logging your lifts and scores into Wattify. I am a huge proponent of this. Like, it, this isn't for, like – Like, just, like, for bragging rights, like, oh, I got first on the workout. Like, no, this is for you to hold yourself accountable. So you can see, oh, I was there five days this week. I got five workouts in, you know. Or we're back squatting. Hey, what's my percentage that I'm supposed to use? You can use Wattify to locate that. Like, I I write down all of the workouts that I do. You know, I, I... when I get done with the workout, I put it in, I put my time in, I feel accomplished. It's just that's just it's like people say you should like make your bed first thing in the morning. It's like that sense of accomplishment you get yep. from that. Just like it makes you feel better. It's like, hey man, I got something done, I put it in, it's tangible, you can see it. Yeah. Right. 
And then it's a, it's a good tool for us as well. You know, we, we could see how many people are in class, how many people are doing the workouts, what the average time is and things like that. So I think, you know, just doing that, that's a huge little thing that you can do to help hold yourself accountable to come into the gym. I think that's huge. And I think in general, just as a gym, you know, a lot of us have gotten away from that. And, and one thing is like, you know, I don't like the leaderboard. Um, I'm not really competitive. I don't care what my score is. Well, I think it's mainly coming from people who are really competitive and it bothers them if their score is not at the top. I log all my scores in. I do them at noon. They all fall. People all beat them. And mm -hmm. it's fine. Even if I'm like yeah. one of the top ones. Um, you know, I don't really look at the whiteboard too much. But what I do look at is my past performances. Mm -hmm. And, you know, especially in my lifting numbers or my benchmark workouts, I'm like, okay, here's where I was sitting at in 2015 at this time. I feel like I should, you know, it, it gives me a, a a benchmark to try and hit. And then if Absolutely. I'm not there, I can look back at the workouts I was doing leading up to that. And I'm like, okay, what was getting me there? What was I doing differently mm -hmm. that, that, you know, that's the reason I was snatching 20 more pounds. So um, logging your scores and lifts huge is huge. huge. Do it. Mm -hmm. Start doing it. Absolutely. Um, what's another one be? Um Doing an active cool down when you're done with your workout. This is something I need to personally improve on. Mm -hmm. um, I've been trying to stretch, you know, after the workouts. But, uh, you know, I'll tend to, like, get distracted by work stuff and not just prioritizing it. And I need to prioritize it. Jump on a rower, do a five-minute cool down, mm -hmm. come up with an, a stretching routine that, yeah. like, addresses something and, like, really getting into a better position. Not just, like, aimlessly stretching, like, hey, I'm, I'm addressing this and I need to try and get to this point in the stretch, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. coming up with a good cool down routine can make a huge difference. And like, instead of running out, jumping in your car, some of you guys have 20 minute drives home. Yeah. You're going to get stiff. You're going to get out of yeah. car feeling terrible. Yeah. Your legs are going to lock up on you if you mm -hmm. squatted a whole bunch, you yeah. know, it's, it's not good. So, mm -hmm. uh, come up with a good cool down routine and then, um, you know, Joey, if you want to talk about some things they could do outside of the gym. Yeah, you know? uh, outside of the gym, guys, sleep. You know, I know people like to f try and fall asleep to, like, Netflix or something like that, but you're not getting good sleep when you're doing that. Yeah. Like like you said, use that podcast if you need something to help you fall asleep. There's a good app. Um, I'll have to find the name of it. I'll put it in the comments. I can't think of it off the top of my head that I use. Uh, I think it's called, like, sleep something. I'll find it. But... Um, I don't like to, you know, have my Netflix on. Like, you don't sleep well. Um, no. Eating. Eat before the workout. I can't tell you how many times people come in through Elements, and I'm like, hey, when's the last time you ate after they, they're, like, getting dizzy during the workout? And they're like, oh, at noon I had a granola bar. And I'm like, it's 8.30 at night. Like, <laughs> you should have eaten. They're like, oh, I didn't want to throw up. Like, you won't throw up. Eat, like, something an hour before you work out. Yeah. Um, and after as well. Try and get something in you quick, too. Um and another thing like that I talked about earlier is cut the booze out. I mean, you don't have to go cold turkey or anything like that. Just sure. minimize it. Yeah. You know, it, you'll, it will go a long way into you seeing results in the gym. We were, me and Kate were talking, about, like I was just in a funk like a few weeks ago. And I'd been on, I'd felt like I was on like my best training run in, in years. And I felt good. And <clears throat> it was just like. It's not that it's like that stereotypical like holidays, but yep. it wasn't just that. It was uh, like after it, we just had like plan after plan after plan. It was like Friday it, instead of like just maybe once every two weeks. It was Fridays and Saturdays. We're going meeting people out for dinner and having drinks, and then it was yeah. just like now I just generally don't feel as good. Yeah, it snowballs know? quickly. It it really does. So minimizing that, and then like you know picking your. Picking your battles, making sure it's like, hey, this is, I'm going to go out, I'm going to blow it out, I'm going to have fun. Yeah. Like, make sure it's, like, worth it and it's not, like, a random Yeah, Friday. it's not just, like, the your routine is, like, hey, I'm in a rhythm of getting hammered yeah. twice a week, you like, know? Don't don't let that be your routine. You're not going to perform well training. Yeah, you're not going to get doing that. your money's worth out of the gym at no. all. Um, last thing I think is just be consistent. Yeah. You know, just show up when you're supposed to show up. Like, if you have a regiment stick to it if you know i like i hate getting out of my routine yeah i'm i'm very structured with everything i do i wake up like you said same time every day yep. eat at the same time work out at the same time and if i have to go home up to canton for a little bit 
like I get out of my rhythm. It could be a day. And it yeah. just it throws me off. Even if you travel, I've noticed like what, yeah. like me and Kate travel, you know, a decent amount. And what I, what we've really started to work on, and we've been pretty successful with is <clears throat> having fun, but maintaining that that r- training routine, and then like your bedtime routine, and mm-hmm. you don't have to stay up until two o'clock in the morning to have fun. You can still do things, explore, have yeah. fun. You can work out. You're just not you're not working. Yeah. Like, maintaining that routine you walk back into the gym and like you're you good to go yeah you're, you know it you doesn't feel like you've been away no not at all so trying yeah. to maintain that routine like for we have a lot of traveling people at our gym and mm-hmm. like trying to maintain that routine you it's know hard. fight for it make it a priority you know like i'm going to the gym at this time instead of uh you know just going out to eat with people you're traveling with and stuff mm-hmm. so cool yeah um so then from the last podcast uh phil powell actually had a couple of good questions for us so he wanted to know what our thoughts are on members following outside programming, such as Invictus or Comp Train or others like that. Yeah, so I, I love these questions. I think this... Uh, oh, we're good. Oh, cool. Um, I love these questions from Phil. They're actually, like, the best questions we've ever got. So um, I wrote a couple things down just to keep me yeah. on track. But, Go for it. So I realized a long time ago, so we've, we've always had open gym. So even back in the old road Gehanna days, like I realized there was, there was a lot of value in having some open gym time for our members and, and myself included, like outside of uh, structured class time. So, you know, whether it was just to, uh, you know, explore, play with new movements, uh, work on weaknesses, run strength cycles, like a ton of reasons where like that open gym time is super valuable for people to really like, stretch out discover new things or get better it's it's a great time to get better um you know in that open gym time back in those days there wasn't really you know different people put up like crossfit had their workout and and different things but uh it wasn't really like where people were starting to follow like different programs and then in, in recent years you know a lot with like outlaw and um when that kind of started and then you know, more recently with like uh, comp train and, and CrossFit Invictus, you know, people are starting to follow those programs inside of other affiliates. Um, these are fantastic programs. Hundred uh, percent. These guys are like, so like Ben and CJ, like they're you know they're masters of their craft. Like these guys have been in the game doing it, um, you know, ten plus years. Both of their affiliates are the most well-known affiliates, you know, that are out there. Both of these guys have had, like, games-winning teams, Mm -hmm. produced a ton of athletes, games-winning athletes. So, obviously, they're doing some really cool stuff. Where I think following, like, you know, we allow it at our gym. We have some people who do it. I think we have a couple groups of people, a couple pairs of guys who do it. Um, In general, though, I think it's not optimal to follow – Another affiliate programming, especially within our gym, because this is written with their geographic location, uh, their gym space, their equipment, and their facility, uh, as well as just the athletes they have in their gym. So they're writing this for the people they're training. Um, All of this is in mind when they're writing this training. You know, our affiliate has been really successful at you know, homegrown producing great athletes using our training protocols, Mm -hmm. which are written specifically for our facility, our weather. So if you're following Invictus in January and they're like, Oh, they programmed runs. It's there. You see running all the time. Or if you see, uh, you know, comp train, they have lots of Schwinn bike calorie workouts, tons of them because Ben bought a bunch of Schwinn bikes before a salt bike was the the thing, the thing to use in CrossFit right. and, you know, nothing against it. It's just, that's what they have in their gym. And so if you're trying to hodgepodge together programming, that's for San Diego in Columbus, Ohio in That'd January. Yeah. You're, you're going to, I think it's, it's going to be less than optimal. And, and I think really when you, sign up for an affiliate and you're, you're paying to go there, like, you know, lean on our coaching, lean on that training environment. You know, if, if you're tackling those programs, you probably, you know, you want to compete or you want to be better than average at CrossFit. Yeah. Uh, you know, overall, 
the all the success we've had is really within like that level two program so like tackle that get the most out of that training environment you know lean on those coaches i mean you guys throw down in that class yeah. i mean it's like it's one of the most intense training environments i've been to a lot of these gyms that people follow their programming yeah it's two people off in the corner checking off things a lot of times you cannot mimic that intensity and it's, that's where I think, like, CrossFit Mayhem has had, like, they just win, win, win year after year because what they've done is they've created similar to that level two with some really high caliber athletes, yeah. some of which they're shopping out and flying in to, like, yeah. train there. You know, but it's like, not that they're doing anything different programming wise, it's just. They're doing it together. Yeah, and they're know? doing it hard, hard and intensely in a group. Mm-hmm. And that's where, you know, lean on that training environment. It's it's hard to replicate a training environment. Like, these training protocols are out there, you know, for everyone. Why? I mean, there's probably 100,000 people that follow comp train. There's not 100,000 people. And they might do all of it, but they're not all regional caliber athletes, no, you know. not at all. You know, we're not all cut from the same cloth, but... Lean on that training environment. Get your money's worth out of the affiliate. I mean, that's my best advice. Like, that's how I feel about, you know, would you go Would you go to CrossFit New England and follow Brute Strength? Probably not, you know. Yeah. Would you go to CrossFit Mayhem and, and do Run Invictus programming next to Matt Hewitt and Rich Froning while they're doing it and after they invited you into a workout? Probably not. Yeah. But I see it happening at our gym, and you know maybe the names aren't quite as big, but you're doing it next to guys who have been to the CrossFit Games, have yeah. been to regional six times. You know, like you've yeah, it's a, the, lean on that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Like I, I'm doing level two right now to get myself ready for the open. Yeah, you know, because I want to work out with other people. I don't like just doing all my workouts alone. Yeah, you know. So there's times where I have to. I yep. don't look forward to doing all this stuff on my own. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'll tell you right now, I push harder when I'm working out with other people. Yeah, it was cool yesterday. I mean, we had 12 people thrown down on an open style workout. And, yeah. You know, and they throw it around weight. And yeah, it was cool. Yeah, yeah. that was cool. Absolutely. Um, another uh, question Phil had, speaking of level two, is how can you determine if you're in the correct class? Are all levels or are level two? Yeah. So what are your thoughts on that? fantastic question so depends on a couple things so one what's your goal so if your goal is to become better at the sport of crossfit you know i think your goal should be to get into that level two class and and try and train there so if you're trying to do you know intermediate level local competitions or get really good at the open or you know try and break into regionals like that's that's going to be your best bet is to get into the level two class because we're training competition standards competition style workouts Mm -hmm. and competition movement so the point of that class is we're trying to get you really efficient and refined with the skills that are necessary to compete in the sport of crossfit and other functional fitness uh competitions Competitions, yeah. yeah yeah so that's that's the whole point of that class so that's the aim of that class uh if your goal is just like hey i want to be in better shape or i just want to be in great shape level two you're going to get in great shape doing it but there's inherent risk doing you know tons of workouts with like ring muscle ups and deficit handstand push-ups and things like that so if you just want to get in generally in like great shape doing all levels and if you want to add some volume or like some strength or conditioning take on an extra credit program but you don't necessarily need to do the games training right. protocols because right. that's that's not the aim is a, the, the goal is a little different yeah, yeah. i mean we're going to throw harder things at you and you know if it's could be too hard for you you're going to lack some intensity there yeah you know if, yeah. if your max set of muscle ups is two and we have a workout where you know guys are knocking out seven at a time on broken and you're sitting there staring at the rings like it can be a little challenging for you yeah you know yeah um so like you said it depends on what you're trying to get out of this yeah and then your skill level so that skill level you you will you have to hit all the the check marks Mm -hmm. to you got to hit a checklist and and i think you reasonably should look at it if it takes you six months to do it you should look at it and be like i can do any of those skills right now shouldn't be something like 
you made it six months ago, but you had to do some crazy stuff to do that. Like, right. it should be something you can you can. It's a maintainable skill set Absolutely. that you have. And then after that, training in the all levels class consistently five days a week, including the Saturday workout, which is like a benchmark workout. And then uh, on top of that, doing one of the extra uh, credit tracks, mm-hmm. like it's three extra workouts. So whether it's the strength, uh, endurance, or skill, so picking one of those tracks and then completing all of that on top of five days a week. Once you can do that type of volume, I think you're ready for uh, the level two class. Yeah. Once you do that for about six weeks in a row. Absolutely. Cool. Um, so then we just got a couple announcements coming up, right? Yep. yep. Um, so coming up quickly, we have the CrossFit Open. Uh, that starts for uh, February 22nd. Uh, we're asking you guys, you know, sign up for the Open. We want this to be our best year ever. Um, if you're doing it, please take that judges course as well. Do us a solid because that way we can have other people, you know, helping out with judging these movements and things like that. And we're not trying to, you know, fight for someone, for a judge and things like that. Um, yeah. 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 So yeah, get on that. I know Kate. Kate's group's done a really good job. Like all of them are signed up already, and most of them have the judges course knocked out. So try and sign up a little bit early. Last year, about a week out, I started to panic a little bit. Like I was like, shoot, we don't have a great turnout. And then luckily everyone came through and and signed up, and we had an amazing turnout. But this year, like it helps us plan. Like hey, just so we kind of have an idea on heats and stuff. Try and sign up early. Be proactive. Get that knocked out. Take your judges course early. Uh, the more judges we have, the better. Um, that day will just flow so much yeah, better for everyone. Yeah, yeah, so, um, yeah. Then once that open ends, we have a party. It's our next big gym party, right? Yeah, so at Grandview Cafe, the Saturday of the last open workout from 5 to 8, we're going to rent out Grandview Cafe. We've traditionally had it at the gym. Um, this year we'll be having it upstairs. Uh, so we're getting outside of the gym and then like coaches and staff, it's cool. So we can all just relax and not have to like clean up and set up and and do a whole party. And then, uh, so we'll take care of you guys from five to eight and then welcome to hang out after that. But you know, we'll cut the tab off then. And after that's on you guys. Yep. Um, and then lastly, we've got some cool renovations coming up for the gym and barbell as well. What do we got for us? Yeah. So. We have a lat pull down in the low row coming into barbell, and that'll happen on Wednesday. So I know oh, yeah. our power hour crew's going to be pretty stoked about that. I'm stoked. I can't yeah. wait to use that thing. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and then um, we have uh, – we're replacing all the couches in the lobby area with a really nice uh, sectional, sectional I just went and bought. So that'll be in Tuesday. I've seen it. It's sweet. Yeah, it's going <laughs> to be cool. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. And then we got some other little things in the work. So be on the lookout for all that cool stuff. Yep. And we're, we're making moves now. Yep, yep. This is a big year of, like, rebuilding. So we've been at our new facility. Like, I mean, it's not a new facility. Right. We've been in our gym for almost six years. So yeah, it's, it's time. time. Yep. It's time to like it renovate time. the whole thing. You're going to see a big facelift just in general Yeah, in both facilities this year. It's going to be awesome. We're really excited about it. Very cool. That is our third episode of the CrossFit Grandview podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed and we will see you next time. Cool. Cool. Later guys.